Seven steps to your breakthrough. Believers don't run from the enemy. We don't run from fear. We seek it. We crush it. We stump it. They call us believers because we actually believe in the power of our Creator. Now I'm not talking about that religion stuff. That put a suit on a Sunday and look good in church stuff. I'm talking about faith. That real faith. That mountain moving faith. I'm talking about that. Walk around all day and talk to God like Abraham did. And that, that I love my neighbor like I love myself did. Now the first step to your breakthrough is to seek God first. That means you have to get along with God daily. Every time you get along with God, you give birth to a piece of greatness inside you, ready to manifest. God has equipped you with an inner power that your enemy cannot withstand. But in order for you to access it, you've got to come into his presence and he will show you how to implement it. Now the second step to your breakthrough is to adopt the mindset of the unstoppable. A disciplined mind rooted in truth can do the impossible. You do not go to the next level with the mindset of the previous level. The average mindset cannot support the rituals, the habits, the discipline, the actions required to produce greatness. And greatness is a frequency. We vibrate in a level equivalent to our faith. So if we want to if we want to break through, we must raise our vibration by way of thought. Every situation, every child and tribulation has a mindset required to overcome it. To change a behavior, we are just a thinking that produces it. The battlefield is over the mind, and you have to win the battle every single day, no days off. Now the third step to your breakthrough. You have to create a powerful vision for your victory. Breakthroughs must first be engineered in the mind. You cannot go to a place that you have no vision for. Those that walk around in life, those that walk through life with no vision, are in a constant state of confusion. Think outside the box by moving your mind to the realm of unlimited possibility. It's critical and biblical that you write your vision down on paper. Habakkuk 2 verse 2 to 3 says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision down and engrave it plainly on tablets, so that the one who reads it will run with it. For the vision is yet for the appointed future. Time it hurries towards the goal of the fulfillment. It will not fail, even though it delays. Wait patiently, because it will certainly come true. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he who keepeth the Lord, happy is he. Now step four to your breakthrough is to master the art of blindness. Begging does not move God. Faith does. Faith is the only language spoken in heaven, and destiny is obligated by universal laws to concede to the demands of unwavering faith. Your faith has nothing to do with your physical senses. What you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you smell, what you feel. Faith is more than words. It's an unconditional activity, a continuous action of refusing to accept one's current circumstances. Religion will not change your circumstances. Faith will. Now Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 3 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, who by faith have testified to the truth of God, God's absolute faithfulness, stripping of every unnecessary weight, the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and activity, persistence, the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of faith, the first instant for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity. 
his authority, and the completion of his work. Just consider and meditate on him, who endured from sins such bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison with your child, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Now step five to your breakthrough. Your mouth is a weapon. Speak life, speak victory, speak the breakthrough. The words you speak aloud will prove which God you serve. You're either serving the God of faith or the God of doubt. You're either serving the God of courage or the God of fear. Declare the breakthrough. Your mouth mirrors the inner state relationship with God. Your mouth is a creating device designed to pull the fruit of two. So let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. When you speak, let it be light. When you speak, let it be faith. When you speak, let it be power. You uproot anything from the enemy in your mouth. Now step six to your breakthrough. Detox emotionally. Examine your spiritual closet for traces of the enemy. You have to make room for your success. You have to make room for your breakthrough. And if in your spiritual closet you are full of resentment, anger, and bitterness, all that junk, then there is no room for success. There is no room for peace. Your future is too important to let it be held hostage by the past. Now when I say forgive, when I say don't be angry any longer, I don't mean that you have to agree with the wrong that has been done to you. It's just a declaration that you refuse to be held in bondage by it any longer. Ephesians 4 verse 31 to 32 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, resentment, strife, hold fire, and slander be put away from you. Along with every kind of malice, be kind and helpful to one another, tender hearted and helpful to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also forgave you. Now, step seven to your breakthrough is to plug into the power. Love what you do. Love changes everything it touches. God is love, and whatever is not of God is not of love. Or how other people say, for whatever is not of love is not of God. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 14 says, Let everything you do be done in love, motivated and inspired by God's love for us. Whatever you do, whatever you ask, Whatever your task may be, work from it the soul that it is. Put in to every effort as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men, that you will receive the inheritance which is your greatest reward. It is the Lord Christ whom you actually serve. My name is Nati Tase.